with uh, your inclusion in the side, you were asked to work on some things at the end of last year when you weren't on the tour. What sort of things did Dave ask you to do and what areas do you think you've um, improved to, to um, bring a, uh, something else to your game for this test match? Um, yeah, so I guess last year, uh, my main feedback there was trying to work on, I guess, my late footwork, just, I guess, trying to isolate defenders more rather than, I guess, run into a few few people, which is um, something I've been working on, for, I guess, the last, well, since that kind of happened, and um, I'm definitely not the, the finished product there, but I'm um, just keeping trying to work on it so I can slowly, I guess, adapt it to my game, and, um, yeah, it's something I guess I'll be trying to use tomorrow night, uh, Saturday night. Uh, you, you love your, your sport generally. What, what does Australia, England mean to you, whether it's cricket, rugby, uh, rugby league? What, what does uh, that giant matchup mean to you and um, how excited are you for Saturday? Yeah, I can't wait. Obviously, being a cricket tragic growing up, watching the Ashes uh, every four years is um, one of the biggest rivalries in sport. And then, I guess, to be able to play, play in the rugby version of it is um, yeah, really cool. And, uh, yeah, there's always been such a big rivalry here, so I can't wait to, I guess, be able to play in one. Um, SCG, I mean, that's uh, not bad for a, a cricket tragic to get to play there. Yeah, yeah, I've played, only played there once before, so I'm really excited to play there. And I was just saying before to a few of the boys, I hope we're in the cricket change rooms, but uh, I'm not sure if it'll be big enough for us. Harry Marty mentioned you basking in um, the Maroons' victory. Was he being tongue-in-cheek, considering you were born in Gunnada and lived in New South Wales to you were 10? You've tried to tell me you go for Queensland, but now's your chance to put the record straight. <laughs> Queenslander, very happy, man. So he was stoked. <laughs> Um, man, we've heard of um, Dave mentioned it there, and I think some other people have over the last couple of weeks spoken about um, how immense you've been at training. No doubt it's tough when you're not getting picked, um, but what's your mentality been like? Give us your version of those events, rocking up to training when, you, when you're when you still not making the team and, and wanting to prove yourself. Yeah, well, I guess, um, yeah, it's obviously disappointing when you don't get picked, but I guess you're trying to use every training session to improve as a footballer because... Um, Yet so it's, the trainings are so competitive, so they're very physical, and then just trying to show up uh, front up at training, and then I guess trying to prepare the boys the best for the weekend because you know what the English will bring in the matches, a lot of physicality and stuff. So if we can prepare them at training, or we'll give them I guess a little warm up there at least. Harry, um, sorry Nathan, you go. I was going to say Harry, that combination with um, Bobby Valentini, you guys play very similar sort of style. Of of rugby, I'm just wondering, does that sort of change how you prepare and come into a game like this, slotting into blindside flanker? Um, I guess not really. Uh, six and eight, I find uh, very similar positions, but I guess for me, it's just probably a little bit more focus on set piece rather than, uh, I guess, for Reds, my game is a lot more um, not, I guess, set piece dominated. So it's something I definitely focus on during the week here to make sure I got all my, I guess, line out and more roll sword. And uh, it's something I'm looking forward to do because I've worked on that for uh, quite a long time now. So. I'm looking forward to implementing the game. I guess, how, how do you find working on that with, you know, you have a couple of hookers, a couple of different hookers in camp this time, locks constantly changing. How do you sort of find those, that dynamic when it's constantly changing? Uh, well, I guess we had about two weeks before the first game together and that we were just constantly rotating as a team. So you're kind of used to always having different um, combinations of training and um, yeah, it's just saying if we can all I guess have a good drill, it kind of you don't doesn't really worry about who who is there, just as long as we all do our our individual uh, bit of the line and more correct. Harry, what was your initial reaction when you were left off that spring tour? Was it hard to kind of get your head around at first, or did you did you see what the the motivation was? Yeah, well, I guess it was disappointing not to go on the spring tour, but I also I guess. Uh, saw what Dave's plan was for me and knowing that he just wanted me to I guess improve as a footballer and give myself time to I guess try and improve as a footballer which is something I um I guess try to take a positive out of and so then I had a good little I guess few months there to really I guess work on my body and work on uh, little bits of my game which you don't normally get time if you're playing week in week out or at least training with the team. Um, you, you were speaking on uh, our podcast at the Roar about um uh, that that work and about some of the martial arts you you did, but also about um, losing the tight pants. Um, can you can you maybe talk about how much weight you have dropped and how how you've done it, and um, also what kind of impact uh, jiu jitsu has had on on what you've been doing? 
Um, yeah, I guess that was probably more just a tongue-in-cheek uh, little <laughs> quote there. I, I haven't really dropped that much weight, to be honest. It's probably just trying to, I guess, just hand, uh, carry it better around the field. And um, I guess jiu-jitsu is um, something different, which we never, I'd never really done before. And it's kind of just working on, I guess, strength low to the ground and uh, just doing yeah, something different there. And um, I, I'm not sure if it's helped with my game, but I guess just doing something different at training is always... Um, I guess cool to do, and it, um, yeah, I just found it quite interesting doing jujitsu. How silly uh, for you? It must feel like this moment's been a long time coming. Can you t sort of tell us, talk to us about your selection, and I guess you know how happy you are to be getting a chance? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's uh, been a long time coming with a couple of setbacks last year. You know, the main goal um, coming over to rugby is like obviously to play for Reds, my club, and to don this gold jersey and uh, you know, I'm feeling really grateful to be um, able to pick and especially in this big um, third game as a designer in, um, in Sydney. So yeah, like just can't, just really excited and can't wait. I guess it's quite timely given the Maroons, you know, playing last year and, uh, sorry, um, you know, I guess leagues at the forefront of, you know, everyone's mind or whatever, but, you know, being able to play for Australia is something extra special, I suppose. Yeah, 100%, you know, um, like I said before, like it's a, it's a main goal coming here. Um, and, you know, just to look back with all these setbacks, the training, you know, watching the boys last year with the spring tour getting picked, you know, I was doing my rehab um, um, at, at, in Melbourne with Dean, um, with you know, it's just like itching to, to be there one day. So now the day has come and I'm just really excited. Julie, you mentioned that period there, rehabbing and, um, you know, watching the spring tour, the squad go off and that sort of thing. Uh, at any point during that time, did you did you sort of doubt your decision to come to rugby because of the setbacks and the um, adversity you faced with the injuries and not being on the field? Did you ever sort of start at any point thinking, you know, like, have I made the right call and that sort of thing? Oh. Uh, I was actually in a, like a really dark place. Um, that thought came in in my mind. You know, did I really do the um, a right decision to come over? But you know what? Like I just had to look at looked at it in a, a positive way. Um, you know, it's just a small setback. So like I just need to like stay positive. And you know, if I do come back on the other side, and I, and now I, I did. And it's a, just a massive credit on myself and, and everyone that's helped me throughout the, uh, the process. So, you know, I'm just really grateful for all of the stuff at the Reds and here at the Wallabies for helping me get to this stage. So was it like the belief that if you did get some consistency time on the park, um, that you would get to this point getting a gold jersey? Is that what sort of dragged you out of that little dark place as you, as you called it? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and same as like, you know, playing really good footy and then at the back end and then just um, done my hammy. And then that's when, and then I done my second hammy again. That's when I like thought of, uh, like, I've never done this in the league before. Um, you know, maybe the game's different here in Union. So I just readjust some of my training programs. Um, you know, all my tra the, trainer, the trainers here yeah, have helped me with that. So, and you see this year, it's just a whole different um, came back didn't miss any game and yeah, just really grateful to be um, playing um, every week, week in, week out. Um, Dave mentioned when they, sorry mate, uh, Dave mentioned when they named the squad um, a few weeks ago and, and again today in reference to you that he felt like having you in this squad um, as opposed to maybe playing for the Oz squad would really accelerate your development in rugby. You're what, four weeks now into this squad and, and training consistently. Do you feel like you are a significantly better player or more developed player than you were a month ago? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree on Dave. Um, coming in here, just the expectation from the different coaches, they expect you to do things that, you know, that I, I usually don't do back in club level that I know I'm missing in my game, like positioning, being busy all the time. And like throughout that four weeks that we had at Sunny Coast, I've worked really hard on that. and. You know, and obviously, you know, you let the coaching staff um, um, make you um, get better in those particular areas. So, you know, uh, 
like I said, like you said, I'm I'm a better player, and I've, um, yeah, better player than I am like a month ago. So you spoke about the the dark times and about how people at the Reds and the Wallabies have helped you. Um, can you talk of anyone in particular um, and any advice you might have received, or someone who has been particularly good at, at bringing you through that process? Oh, I've had like a, a couple. Um, they uh, from the Reds. They we have the um, a Gina, our physio, a day, our doctor. Um, they've always been. Um, Helping me um, right from the start, and the guys here at the Wallabies, Dino, um, Casey, just non-stop, um, trying to get me better, trying to get me running again, get my speed back up. So you know, um, just how they all like come together just to help me um, get to this stage. You know, like I can't thank them enough. And, and when you see a game like last night's Origin, do you miss that sport? <laughs> PG, uh, uh, I just like watching it, you know, um, just um, zoning in just to watch the, you know, the, the players that you played with, played against, you know. It's just, you know, State of Origins a massive game here around this time of the year, so, you know, everyone's zoning in just to um, watch it and cheer for their state.